The Military Modelers Club just held their model contest, and the tables were loaded full of quality builds, and the swap meet was packed full of bargains to be had. Let's check out all the automotive entries and see what was in the swap meet to be had for those car guys. That's a 68 Cornet RT Hemi car. This is actually a kit bash. The body and interior is resin from Model House. I think it's from Model House um, because the 68 is unattainable. There are, I mean, you pay $300 for a kit. It's really not that good. Uh, this was that, and it was it was kit bashed with the 68, 69 AMT. Uh, Plymouth Roadrunner GTX for chassis, engine, drivetrain, all that stuff. And then uh, this is MCW uh, dark green metallic to, to pretty closely match the authentic color of this with a green interior, interestingly enough. The Hemi engine is again completely detailed with Fireball Model Works uh, carbs. Um, then I went, you know, whole hog with everything on that thing. The red stripe tires, the dog dish wheels, and hubcaps are all Fireball model works. The tail stripe is from the uh, 68 Charger. And you can turn this over. I didn't do the parking brakes. Or did I? Yeah. I did the brake lines and the fuel. It's got some model car garage photo edge. I I'm tend to try to not do a lot of photo edge. Uh, but when you're doing a build like this, it's better to be accurate. And try to do it as closely as you can. And I was—that's what I was trying to do. The only thing is, I didn't—I didn't do a PE grill because there isn't any available, and that's a different—that's a different question. I guess. So I'm hoping they'll do fine. They, they seem to show okay. Yeah. Second turnbuckles so for the screw on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, give me a break. This is the best engineered kit I've ever built. It's accurate miniatures. The one of the complaints that people have had that have built this is that the body panels don't fit together. I can put every single body panel together on this car and it will all fit. It's just you just have to take now, the time and care. Are those the tires that came with it? These are the tires that came with it. An amazing kit. No kid. And then the doors are those are detail master piano hinges that are functional. 
You get a strip and yeah. you just cut them. They're paying the ass to make, but they have little tines that are, and they fit together like like this over a little spline that you put through there. So they will work. It's just I chose to leave it exploded like this. Uh, I think yeah, I want to cover all that up. Yeah, I mean it's it's like you know there's so much here that's so interesting. You know, it's so beautifully made and finely engineered. Yeah, Mosler Wachenbacher, uh, or whatever his name is, and he had a successful campaign with it, and he was really into this, and later on drove some of the MAFs, and on and on, um, but they, they, uh, they did three versions of this, they did Bruce McLaren's, they did Oscar Kowalowski, and they did this version. I opened up the trunk because the trunk detail is so freaking cool in this thing. I mean, it is really neat. Um, what did I lose? Okay, well, great. That's the detail underneath. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, and it looks like I lost a cooler. Yeah, there was a cover that goes on this. The reason it's not on there is because early in testing for uh, the race, it ran through a couple different configurations with the coolers, the rear end coolers. And this was the original configuration. And then they found later they raced it actually with, with two coolers on either side. So this is actually accurate for the early version before the race. So this is Roger Penske and uh, who else did I say? Yeah, Penske and, and Jim Hall were the drivers of this car. Hell, I don't know. And that's accurate, Ermin White. I don't know all my stuff. All of this stuff, all of that is photo etch that you assemble. And it goes together really great. I mean, this is the second accurate. I think this is the first accurate miniatures kit. Who makes Accurate miniatures. They were famous for aircraft more than anything else. And I had a nice conversation online with the with the creator of this car. It was really interesting because I posted it on one of these model GTP whatever bullshit. And the guy, you know, shows up and he's like, yeah, I made that kit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? That's what a cool. privilege, you know? No doubt. Because, uh, and and so I tried to, you know, it's it's got some photo edge. Uh, but the carbs are the are kind of the, the golden part of that mm -hmm. kit. Because they are beautiful Webers. They are.
yeah. MCW color with clear <laughs> polish. Um, the markings are for its second Le Mans win in 1965. That car won 64 and 65. So its race history is over here. There were six of these made. This is the second one that was built. Uh, it's a curbside. The body, interior, chassis are all resin. But it's probably the best resin I've ever seen. The precision is amazing. The scale motorsports. Uh, and so it's a multimedia, actually. All of the glass is um, vacuum The wheels are, are resin, the tires are uh, vinyl. Um, the, and it's got a mixture of uh, cast metal parts as well inside, but all of that stuff inside. And then all of the wind wings and all this other stuff had to be, I had to scratch up. Uh, it's got a nice set of uh, photo etch with it. The wheels are actually correct, the sunburst wheels. Those are the Hellebrands. They were actually magnesium wheels that they ran. Uh, but this is the car that won 60, 65. It's not been published all that much. Most people do the 64 car. Uh, so I went a little little haywire on it. You know, I'll pick it up real quick. It's a chunk of plastic or a chunk of resin. There is no styrene in this kit. The entire front and rear suspension are metal. It's a beautiful build. Yeah. yeah that's cool. Thank you. Try not to handle it too much. Yeah, no kidding. These rarely come out, I'll tell you. They just, you know, there's so much time and effort in this. This is this is about a 120 hour build. Yeah. yeah. But the, be the best part of a lot of these is that you're starting with something that's really good. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, I've had, the, I've had this model for 15 years or more, and Scale Motorsports does a variety of things, you know, from photo etch, detail sets, to a kit like this that is just, it just takes my breath away that we're, yeah. we're so privileged. I mean, just fitting those headlight covers, those are, you know, the days worth of work. Yeah, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just thinking, man. Yeah. You know, first of all, you gotta find where they are. Yeah, <laughs> You know, like watch cement or whatever the hell, uh, or the testers. Generally, everything that is in a final assembly is all uh, canopy glue, clear yeah. white yeah. glue. Yeah. Because yeah. if you make a mistake, you can. You need an applicator. And... Well, I don't even. Well, I mean, I'll use a toothpick or something like that that I can control it with. Put a dot, and the nice thing about canopy glue is it's got a little bit of a tackiness, and as it sets up, it hardens. And you can. You know, if you make a mistake, you, it's water-based. Yeah. You know, there's no need to use CA on anything that you've got, uh, you know, on a final assembly, because that'll mess you up big time. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think I added the tire decals, you know, the, the, the Goodyear. Uh, and the, the method for doing that is you gloss coat the rubber, the tire, apply the decals, then dull coat. Okay. That way, your decals stick to something. Yeah. They won't stick to vinyl or rubber, but they will. And these are, these are. I think I did these. With, I think those are decals. I can't remember if they're decals or, or, or uh, drive fit. But it's an, it's an interesting car. It's an interesting history. Uh, shall we call this one the, the number one Cobra? Because you can, you can see in here all of its, its race history. And it was a serious winner. This is the car that gave Ferrari fits. This car was actually almost as fast as the GT40s at 65. Just didn't have the top end, but it, had, but it would run with them through everything else. Uh, and the only reason it didn't win was because it just didn't have that. You know, uh, it ran in 65. It was the Ferraris. The Fords broke. I mean, that was the that was kind of the prototype year for Shelby to have the, to have the. Uh, the GT40 program. So in 64 is a miserable, you know, <laughs> they lost everything. Um, but this was the car that really kind of put Shelby on the map. You know, he had the Cobras, which were the open top cars. And he asked Pete Brock, I need a car that's got more top end. Well, this car immediately proved its worth in 64. It had the top end. And it would run 190 with a small block Ford with wires. You know. 
you know, everybody said, well, that, that, that tail, that's sure weird. Yeah, when you put a spoiler on the end of it, you've got something that will, will stay on the damn road. You know, it used to be all of these sort of, you know, pointy front ends were, were you know, the Jaguars and the Ferraris, they were all having front end lift issues. At 140 miles an hour, Cobra is not on the ground anymore. Okay, this is. And they did it without any aerodynamic. There was no freaking wind tunnel in the day. There was none of that. Yes, it was Brock Hard. Yeah, well, you know, well, Brock uh, came from a background of aerospace design also. And he understood aerodynamics despite the fact that there wasn't anything to prove what he was doing other than the results on the track. And this car did that. This one is a multimedia nightmare. <laughs> it's got model car garage photo etch. It's got Fireball Model Works carburetors. Um, a friend provided extra tail lights because he wanted three tail lights on his car. And uh, the engine is completely, the engine bay is completely detailed with throttle, ignition, fuel, um, coolant. Uh, you know, <laughs> brakes, the whole nine yards. Then the underside. Is corrected with uh, brake and fuel lines and parking brake lines. Nice. Huh, it, it didn't just go to open headers? It, it had the exhaust. And 65, 64 and 65 super stock regulations required fa uh, factory exhaust. No kidding. This is the way it came from the factory. No kidding. I transplanted for, uh, they actually came with log type headers. In other words, there were individual branches that came into a log, which was originally the configuration for the car. Landy didn't run it that way. This is an early configuration of this car. Later in 64, after after the Indy Nationals, the car was changed to the altered wheelbase, where they allowed two percent correction for the front and rear. I think it was five percent in the rear and two percent in the front. So the whole chassis was essentially geometry was shifted. Um, but this is an early version. I love a gasser, I gotta get it. Yeah. I, I like it, I buy it again. I find it, I get it again. Sorry, I don't have a nice young female here helping me. She went back to college. <laughs> and my wife just had carpal tunnel surgery last week, so she's out of the picture. She can't run it. This is a sick But I was thrilled to get it. I was. Well, I think it's close to the room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's my son. Yeah. Slack fan more genius. How many years you've been setting up and doing this? 
38. I know you've been around just, as long as I can I remember. Turned, I just turned 72 Thursday. Did you? Yep. I don't know what this that old. My birthday. So he's 49. Well, sometimes that's the best way to do it. I'm always glad to see you all. I appreciate that very much. Well, there must be thousands of decals here. It's it's ridiculous. And then yeah. All these open oh. stock back here. Wow. For all of them. So, I mean. Yeah, it's scary how much money. Hey, Dad. Details. Do you have any Corvair bodies, or do I have them at, at my house in the Flintstone? Oh, Flintstone. I don't think I have any. You can look and see, but I don't want to look and see. Give me a second, boy. Look through it. Oh, And regular Novas. You guys see these, get them. They ain't making them no more. Mobius said they are gone. These are cool, these little dirt bike accessory packs. You get two dirt bikes. It's a kit that just came out. Actually, two kits in one. I don't know. 
Just leave the decals behind for someone. Make all these, don't you? I like this. It does good work. Yeah, she, she's a figure painter, so she makes herself aces and say, three for me, one to sell. Three, there you go. Four for me, two to sell. <laughs> they look good with a, a figure or a model sitting on them. Yeah. Nice work. 